With the hectic pace of work and daily plan change on SpaceX's Starship, it seems that if you blink, you'll miss a lot. While attention has been on prototypes S24 and B7 for the first orbital flight, SpaceX is also charging ahead with at least five mega rockets for 2023. Kevin Randolph recently took a picture of Ship 25 moving into the Massey's test site, so that's what we're gonna start with. He also shared, feeling like Oprah is out here saying, you get a starship, you get a starship, you all get a starship. Massey's test site is a new place at Starbase. On Sunday, January 8th, Musk shared that SpaceX acquired a gun range near Starbase to use the land. Massey's gun range is being turned into a rocket test facility. Perfect match, he wrote via Twitter. The location is approximately 15 minutes away from the launch site along the same Highway 4 road. The acquired land is expected to be used for Raptor engine testing and repairs. Since SpaceX operations began in 2019, it has attracted hundreds of tourists to Boca Chica Beach. People would go check out the Starbase launch site and then go to Massey's gun shop and range for target practice activities. According to local residents, the local shooting range is still open at a different location along the State Highway 4 road that leads to Starbase. Back to Ship 25, the trip is not its first. Starship S-25 first headed to SpaceX's South Texas launch and test facilities on October 19th of 2022, shortly after the vehicle was fully assembled. Around three weeks of testing followed, and SpaceX installed Ship 25 on a static fire test stand last month. It has now almost certainly been moved here to begin its cryoproofing campaign. The campaign could tell us a lot about the status of Starship prototypes. To date, only two ships have completed full six Raptor static fire tests, and both took days, weeks, or even months to build up those six engine milestones, with multiple smaller tests. If Ship 25 were to skip those preliminary tests and immediately conduct a six engine static fire, it would be a sign that SpaceX is significantly more confident in the current Starship design. While the test plan of Ship 25 is not very clear, Ship 26, a naked prototype, is undergoing some cryogenic proof tests. Ship 26 was pressurized and loaded with liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, or both to safely simulate the thermal and mechanical loads it will experience when filled with propellant. The stand is fitted with hydraulic rams that can simultaneously simulate the thrust of six Raptor engines, which altogether will have 1,380 tons or around 3 million pounds of thrust. Ship 26 is four months younger than Ship 25 and rolled out with Raptors installed as it still needs to pass several simpler tests. If it passes those tests, SpaceX will presumably return Ship 26 to the Starbase factory for Raptor installation. Indeed, in space, we have to really take each step with the utmost care. Recently, NASA and SpaceX scrubbed Monday's launch attempt of the agency's SpaceX Crew-6 mission to the ISS, or the International Space Station, due to a ground systems issue. Mission teams decided to stand down to investigate an issue preventing data from confirming a full load of the ignition source for the Falcon 9 first stage Merlin engines. Triethyl Aluminium Triethyl Boron, or TTEB. I'm proud of the NASA and SpaceX team's focus and dedication to keeping Crew-6 safe, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Human spaceflight is an inherently risky endeavor, and as always, we will fly when we are ready. SpaceX has removed propellant from the Falcon 9 rocket, and the astronauts have exited the Dragon spacecraft for astronaut crew quarters. Both the Falcon 9 and Dragon are in a safe configuration. NASA and SpaceX will forego a launch opportunity on Tuesday, February 28th due to unfavorable weather forecast conditions. The next available launch attempt is at 12.34 a.m. Eastern, Thursday, March 2nd, pending resolution of the technical issue preventing Monday's launch. The mission comes as the astronauts currently on the ISS have been grappling with a separate transportation issue. In December, a Russian Soyuz spacecraft that had been used to transport two cosmonauts and one NASA astronaut to the space station sprang a coolant leak. After the capsule was deemed unsafe to return the astronauts, Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, launched a replacement vehicle, MS-23, on February 23rd. 
It arrived at the ISS on Saturday. The main goal of the Soyuz MS-23 mission is to replace the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that was launched on September 21st of 2022 with Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Petalin, and Francisco Rubio aboard, but was damaged on the ISS. The version of technical damage to the spacecraft during the manufacturing process was not confirmed. According to Sergei Krikalev, the executive director for human spaceflight at Roscosmos, the issue occurred in the cooling system due to an object of around one millimeter puncturing a hole in the external cooling loop of the spacecraft. The diameter of the hole is less than one millimeter. It cannot be determined whether this was a micrometeoroid or a small piece of orbital debris. Therefore, the crew that would have flown in the damaged Soyuz MS-22 vehicle will use this Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft instead. In our last bit of news, ULA announced that the first Vulcan launch will take place in May, a date the company says is based on remaining tests of the rocket and its main engines as well as launch windows for its primary payload. We are now targeting the 4th of May, so we plan our manifest around that and be ready to fly that payload when it comes in, Bruno said. ULA will have a window of about four days to conduct the launch. Several factors led ULA to select that date. One is the mission requirements of Peregrine, the primary payload on the launch, which has a window of only a few days each month to fly its trajectory to the moon. The second is a series of tests of the Vulcan Centaur rocket, currently in the vertical integration facility adjacent to the pad. Bruno said the rocket will roll out to the pad a few days from now for tanking tests, followed by at least one wet dress rehearsal, where the vehicle is fully loaded with propellants and goes through a practice countdown, stopping just before engine ignition. That will be followed by what ULA calls a flight readiness firing, a wet dress rehearsal that ends with a firing of the BE-4 engines in the booster at about 70% of the rated thrust for three and a half seconds. That is more than adequate for us to understand all of those systems. After the flight readiness firing, the rocket will return to the integration facility for payload integration, then be rolled back to the pad for launch. In parallel, ULA and Blue Origin are finishing the formal qualifications of the BE-4 engine, which Bruno described as the pacing item for the launch. Much. It's taking a little bit longer than anticipated. He revealed that in a qualification test of one of two engines, the liquid oxygen pump had about 5% higher performance than expected or seen on other engines. When the performance of your hardware has even a small shift that you didn't expect, sometimes that is telling us that there could be something else going on in the system that is potentially of greater concern. ULA and Blue Origin decided to take the engine off the test stand and disassemble it. Engineers concluded concluded that the higher performance was just unit to unit variation and not a problem with the engine itself, Bruno said. That would allow qualification tests to conclude in time for a launch as soon as mid-April. However, Peregrine's launch window in April is earlier in the month, hence the decision to set the May 4th launch date for Vulcan. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, my team and I will see you next time.